All right, Kevin, mm. let's talk about this then. Danny Hay has been archered. He has um, been given the red card by New Zealand football. They've spent an awful lot of money on this review. And I believe that the questions were very pointed and that the point of the review was to point the finger at Hay and to get rid of him. What are your thoughts on this? Do you think it's an own goal like I do? Yes, I do. I think we're, Danny's had one little spell which had massive hiatus there with COVID interfering. Uh, his team was not great. Not as I don't think the young players he put heaps and heaps of praise on for me performed in the, uh, particularly in the last Australian game. I thought they lacked a little bit of guts and determination. But overall, it was a good campaign. They were coming on, and obviously, as they get older and they're all professionals, they're going to get a little bit better. So I, I did really think that Danny deserved another run. Well, according to the review, I mean, they said that he was the guy in charge, but they didn't like the way that he was in charge. They didn't like his management style. They talk about communication or a lack of. I can tell you a couple of facts here, Kevin. Uh, the CEO did not contact Danny for 16 weeks. The only time he got in touch was after Chris Wood came out publicly and spoke in, on behalf of Danny. And none of the board members have ever, ever said a word to Danny or even tried to make contact with him. And none of them of the board have any experience at all playing football or running football. That's no surprise to you, though, is it? No, it isn't. And I think that's one of the big problems. They talk about all these high-performance people and New Zealand people, and they've got solicitors doing things. And you can point it any way you want. Somebody gives a statement, I'll just take the bad and leave the good. It's often happened to me. You've got things like, High performance. What the, it, to me it sounds like you don't need a coach. You just just give it to the NZFA staff and the high performance people. Let them run the team because that's what it's pointing that way. And Danny is is the type of is is old school, mm. but old school demanding, intense. For me, they're good qualities. You need to be demanding. You need to be intense. Yes, you need to have sense of humour. And if you look at the two times that we we went to to the World Cup, my sense of humour, of course, was John Adzed. He was always jocular and light. He was the he was a good cop. I was the bad cop. Then Ricky came later with a fantastic, you know, set of players, professionals, and they got great results. You know, probably I think they were the only unbeaten team at the That's World right. Cup. That's right. So we have done it. We have done it. There are. So, well, how did they do it in those two instances? It's nothing like people poking the nose in and telling you what to do. I can tell you that. Look, when you have, I'm going to, you know, a list of names here. You've got Chris Wood, who should be the most listened to name in New Zealand football, given he's our biggest superstar. You've got Winston Reid, Ivan Vicilic, Ryan Nelson. These guys are all coming out saying that Danny Hay was the right guy for the job. I don't know better voices to listen to, Kevin. If you want to achieve on the world stage, those are the people that have achieved on the world stage. Why wouldn't you listen to them? You're absolutely correct. I mean, they're, they're, your, they're your senior players, they're experienced, and ditto with Danny Hay. He was at Leeds United, he's been a professional player, he's played in New Zealand, he's a local lad, he knows the scene here. If you look at, you know, look back to the history of the people they've been, been bringing across from England and so forth and Europe, they've been abysmal failures. You know, we've had people here who've not done the job and they've run away after 12 months, etc. You know, you've got all kinds of people who have mucked up with the girls and not done well with the boys. And Yeah, there's been a couple who've done okay, but they shot through and went to other places to perform. They've not got a very good record for setting on people from overseas. So, you know, when you when you look at New Zealand football, this isn't, you know, this administration, it's not like this is the first time that it has been run by people who have no understanding or appreciation of the game. How do we get into this situation, Kevin, and how do we continually repeat it that we get into the situation that the people that run the joint aren't football people? How does this happen, mate? I don't know, because as I said, look back to 82, what did we have? We had Ad Zed, who was, who was the overall manager. I did the coaching. We've got a phys we had a physio and a doctor on the medical side. We had a masseur with us. Uh, probably the only thing we didn't like, because I took the goalkeepers, was a goalkeeping coach as well. But you don't need all these psychologists. You don't need high performance bosses. It's all garbage. It's all gobbledygook. And even the statements they put out, by time you've, by t I tell you what, by the time you've read them, you start on square one and end up back on square one. You don't progress anywhere.
one of the most disappointing things for me, mate, is I work in this business. And, you know, the slavish way that the so-called sports media and the reporters, they just get this garbage, Kevin. They just report it like it's verbatim, like it's fact. There's no any kind of investigation around it. It's just, here's the statement, oh, that must be true. So when do we turn into the, when do we turn into just such a bunch of people who refuse to use our own brains even? Exactly, but I still keep saying, Martin, look back to when we did have success, and it was simple. You know, as I said, in 82 and 2010, simplicity itself. You, didn't, you had people who were from football involved with the teams. We reported directly to Dempsey. Dempsey, Dempsey made the decisions, so it went from Ad Zed Fallon on to Dempsey, and Ricky Herbert, had a, he had a similar setup as well, and that, that, it was simple. The more people you involve with more opinions, the more complex and complicated it gets. So where do we go from here, though? Because we're all of the same you know, boat, aren't we? We all want the national team to succeed. We want the all-whites getting games. It's the most important thing for New Zealand football is that men's side is playing internationally and qualifying for World Cups. What do we do now, then? We've only had... You know, the two New Zealand coaches, which are Danny and Ricky. I mean, it, you know, what do we do now? Do we try and find another one? Do we go overseas and get, as you said, another pointy shoot tight pant Anthony Hudson type? What is the answer? I don't know. As I said, it's Danny. I felt Danny deserved another spell, and it's as simple as that. I mean, I know him well. He, he was my, one of my ex players, and even with, I had him right from being a schoolboy. And he knew the country well. He'd, been, he'd achieved professionalism at Leeds United and so on. I mean, it, it reeks of a little setup. Um, I don't know where they're going to go from here. I honestly don't know. It's, it's looking a little bit, you know, little boy lost. Um, it just doesn't look great at the moment.